670 KBOI. We talk to Democrats about the latest news in the Idaho legislature. Now here are Paul J. and Chris on 670 KBOI. And good morning at studio with us this morning, Alana Rubel, Representative Rubel from District 18. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Wonderful. Great to be here. What are you working on? I am working on so many things right now. I have a couple bills in the hopper. One is to restore dental coverage to folks that are on Medicaid. This is Mm -hmm. not to add anyone to Medicaid, but the people that are already there. Uh, Legislature stripped away dental a few years ago. Why was during the we're broke period? Exactly. And now we're in the we're flush period, so we want to put it back. <laughs> and so at the time, it was just to save money. They weren't actually saying that people on Medicaid don't need dental work. Uh, exactly. They very much need dental work. Uh, it was done in 2011 as part of the recession-era cuts where they were just looking to slash everything in sight. Mm-hmm. And it turns out uh, it's very penny-wise, pound-foolish. It turns out when you take away preventive dental care, these folks end up turning up with much worse problems like diabetes and cardiovascular problems and kidney disease, and then the taxpayer's on the hook for that. Uh, so you actually end up losing thousands of dollars a year for each each of these people because they're not getting preventive dental care. Yeah, I believe there's a there's a commercial on TV where the woman explains that most everything you eat goes through your teeth. <laughs> so true. <laughs> so true. So that's one bill I'm working on. Um, also working on one to uh, eliminate mandatory minimum sentencing for drug offenses. Uh, right now, judges have discretion for almost any crime that a person commits in terms of setting the sentence, but not for drug offenses. Okay. Uh, and, you know, you have a certain amount of a certain drug on you. They have no choice. They've got to lock you up for 10 years, 15 years. Doesn't matter if you're 17 years old. Doesn't matter if it's a first time offense. They just have no choice. Why is that the law? Why? What was the what was the reasoning behind making it that way? You know, it's funny. It passed in 1992, and it was part of the war on drugs, where they, you know, three strikes you're out, and all these things where they just couldn't lock people up for long enough. Um, they found that it hasn't really had any impact on offenses. In fact, drug offenses have just been climbing, climbing, climbing. It certainly has had effect on our pocketbooks, and now we are overspending on prisons to the point where we're going to have to start shipping them out of state. Um, And actually, funnily, the people that pushed for it in the first place have now come out, at least some of them, and said it was a mistake and we need to repeal it. So Justice Jones, the Supreme Court, has written an op-ed on that, and uh, there's another attorney in town who was really a pusher of this in the first place and said it was a mistake. Do, Do you think there's a pretty good chance that that will pass? I really hope so. I okay. really hope it does. I think we have really strong support on the committee. We just need to get it heard and make sure, you know, people don't don't uh, get soft when they get started. I mean, they'll get pounded on the other side, I'm sure, by a few constituencies. But I think we're in the right on this one. All right. I'd like to get your opinion. Members of the uh, Idaho House Educational Committee uh, yesterday, <laughs> you know where I'm going here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Continued to balk at the proposed science standard that deal with climate change, even as public testimony came in 100 percent in favor of the newly revised standards. Um, Tell us about this. And how you feel about it. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe we are where we are right now. And we'll see what happens today. And I desperately hope they do the right thing and just approve these good science standards. They shot them down last year, as people may remember. And then a committee came together with the top educators. They had the top science teacher in the state. They had scientists. They really worked hard on this for months. And they unanimously came forward with this recommendation that reflects the scientific consensus on the issue. And actually, if you ask me, it's a pretty wimpy version. They actually pulled climate change reference is out of some of them. There were some that I actually think are so wimpy now, they may not really fully reflect the realities. You know, they have things like, you know, well, humans can have some impact on biodiversity, some good, some bad. I'm like, well, it's pretty much bad. We're seeing a major drop in species diversity any way you cut it, and it's pretty clearly traceable to human activity. Um, But even these standards, now they're thinking about striking. Um, And, you know, it's just not fair to the Idaho's kids to have them not learn the best science we can teach them. Is is it your opinion then that, that rather than vote on what should be in a science book, that we perhaps leave that up to scientists and people <laughs> who write those things? Well, absolutely. And these these standards were developed by scientists and science teachers, and it just seems crazy to me to have these partisan folks swoop in and, and squash it. And it's not doing our kids any favors if they're learning less accurate science than kids are in other states. I know it's the only state that uh, has removed references to climate change, right? That is correct. 
I hope we're not going to give other states ideas. At least I hope we remain the only state. But, you know, there's still a chance to save it. The Senate may still save it. And, you know, maybe they'll surprise us all and vote today to actually, you know, keep decent science standards. You're interested also in, in hearing aids for children. You bet. I, you know, you learn so many things as a legislator when people come to you with these problems that you just didn't even realize existed. Uh, but I had a constituent that came to me who has three children who are partially deaf or hard of hearing. And I learned that insurance companies don't cover hearing aids for these kids. Um, you can get it if you're on Medicaid, but you have to be so dirt poor to be on Medicaid that if you're just average poor <laughs> working family, um, you're called on to say, pay for this entirely yourself. These things are five to $8,000 a pop. Um, and you know, this deafness is often congenital. So families that are hit are hit hard and they may have two or three kids that need these. And, you know, you have a family that's making $30,000 that's suddenly called upon to come up with $25,000 for hearing aids. It ain't happening. And a lot of these kids aren't getting them. I was hearing heartbreaking stories. I think mean, I heard a story about a 16 year old kid who came in wearing the same hearing aid she'd received as an infant because the parent couldn't pay to upgrade it. And this thing probably hadn't worked for years. They're supposed to be replaced every three years. Um, kids are suffering in their performance in schools, and it's just not right. So uh, trying to fix that so that the families who need them can get hearing aids for their kids. We're talking with Representative Alana Rubel on Minority Friday. Join Joe Prin in the Home Fix show Saturday. On Idaho Talks Live, it is Minority Friday when we talk to uh, a Democrat from the Idaho State Legislature, and it's Representative Ilana Rubel from uh, District 18. Uh, Non-compete clauses. Now, uh, in, in radio, we have them, which means you can't just, like, you know, quit on a Wednesday and start working for a different radio station on a Thursday, something like that. Right. Uh, and that's generally a contract that people sign. Right. But uh, there are some stipulations, I guess, and, and uh, there are laws about it. Well, uh, yes. And in, in 2016, Idaho became the most draconian state in the nation in terms of enforcing non-competes. Um, they basically passed a law... I mean, I don't want to exaggerate this, but it's pretty darn close to what it says. It says the employer always wins. Um, it basically says that any time a person goes to work for a competitor, this isn't always a clear-cut case. What's a competitor, by the way? Right. You know, for an example, you know, I have a friend that works at a company where it makes, you know, beepy noises for trucks when they back up. Someone left and starts a company that makes beepy noises and flashing lights for planes. Is that a competitor? Who knows, right? I mean, the first company doesn't do anything for planes, but they could try to be aggressive and say, well, someday we might want to make something for for planes, and yeah. so we consider you a competitor. So it can be really hazy, and employers can be very aggressive in what they call a competitor that maybe the employee wouldn't consider a competitor. So they've signed this agreement when they started, saying they won't, won't go work for a competitor. Some people sign these without even knowing they've signed them. Sometimes it's you know people that just sit in their pile of paperwork they get in the first day, and before they know it, they've just signed their life away saying they can't work anywhere else. You have very skilled people, plumbers, who that's all they know to do is be a plumber or a neurosurgeon or whatever. They basically can't work if they can't work for a competitor um, or in something that's arguably competing. What the legislature did is said in any case where somebody goes to a competitor, your first employer is entitled to basically shut you down, um, stop you from working at your new job, make you shut down your new business. Um, it put a huge unmeetable burden on employees who want to change jobs and really treats these agreements unlike any other type of contract that has ever existed in the history of contract law, to my knowledge. I think it is deeply unfair to employees, deeply unfair to people who might want to start new businesses, and we should just go back to treating them like normal contracts instead of contracts where the employer always wins. What was, was that considered to be one of those moves to attract businesses to come to Idaho? No, I don't even think it was that well thought out, honestly. Wow. It, I mean, this is a big, some big businesses love this because it helps them lock in their workforce. I mean, frankly, it can allow some employers to pay under market wages because you don't have to pay market wages if your employees can't go look for better paying work. Um, but a lot of people in the startup industry, it, it went through without anybody even knowing it was happening. It went through in 2016. People in the startup community, employees didn't even know it was happening. It was just kind of a wonky issue. No one was watching. And now here we are. So I'm trying to fix that one. House Minority Leader um, <laughs> earlier this week um, called the... Uh, Tax cuts reckless. Would, would you agree with this assessment? I do. I do. Um, 
you know, this is, I mean, it's a $202 million tax cut. It's the highest tax cut in history, I think, as as the majority leader says. Um, I am not at all convinced we can afford this. We have some big bills coming our way. Uh, we still have commitments under the teacher career ladder where we have promised these raises to teachers for a five-year period. Um, there are other things that we've promised in terms of enrollment, in terms of fixing higher education. We just had this higher education task force where all these recommendations came out, which are going to cost money. Um, and I think if we do this, we will basically you know, tear away our ability to fund any of our other priorities. Um, this is going to punch a massive hole in the budget. And we have a lot of other uncertainty. We don't know what's coming our way from the feds. The federal budget was proposing, you know, 30% cuts to all the agencies, which would make us unable to find fund most of our agencies, you know, health and welfare, labor, um, we could be called upon to come up with a lot of state money to fill those gaps. And it seems like a very dangerous time in this period of uncertainty where we don't know if we're going to be getting any of this fun federal money in to suddenly just get rid of all our state money. <laughs> so I am not convinced at all we'll be able to fund basic necessities um, with a tax cut of this size. There has been a proposal to uh, change some of the requirements for being on, on Medicaid. Yeah. In particular, one I think that would affect somewhere between seven and eight hundred people uh, that has to do with going to work if you are basically able bodied. Right. Uh, so, what do you think about those changes? Um, I'm really concerned about it, and I'm still in the process of having meetings to make sure that I hear absolutely every side of it. But Idaho has some of the strictest requirements to get on Medicaid. It's almost impossible to get on Medicaid in Idaho. To get on Medicaid in Idaho, you have to be a child or severely disabled, or you have to be earning under 26% of federal poverty while raising a child. Federal poverty level is $11,000, so that means you're making $3,000 or less while raising a child. And I've been informed that a large amount of that population is suffering from mental illness. Now they're talking about maybe adding into Medicaid people with stage four metastatic cancer, hemophilia, MS. So I'm like, look at this population of people on Medicaid. Who in that group do you think is a fat cat that's just living back, you know, kicking back, living a life on Medicaid? And to make them jump through all these extra hoops to get necessary medical care, it just seems like a farce. I think they're painting this picture of these lazy people who could be out there working. We've already built work requirements into who even gets on Medicaid. And to now go to these people with severe, severe problems and living in desperate poverty and say, hey, you got to prove to us and you got to submit all this paperwork before you can get your medical care, it just feels mean-spirited, and I don't really know what the goal is. I mean, I don't know if the goal is to just try to catch those who can't get their act together enough to submit the paperwork and kick them off their health care. That doesn't seem like a very worthy objective to me. So maybe it sounds good. You know, it sounds great as a soundbite to say, oh, we're going to, you know, accountability, we're going to make them work. But when you actually look at the people in this group, I don't think it makes any sense at all. Representative, thank you for uh, being here today. <laughs> And uh, very insightful. Alana Rubel has been our guest from District 18. Thank you so much for having me. Always a pleasure. KBOI News Time 8.